Hello everyone, it's back to Space Quest for the fourth installment in the series. Roger Wilco and the Time Rippers. I think this is the favorite of a great many people, and I'm no exception, though it's tied with number three in my case. Space Quest 4 was the first game in the series to be released in VGA, at around the same time the Space Quest 1 VGA remake was made. But it also has another novelty. It was released in what was known back then as a talky CD-ROM version with digitized speech. And that's the version I'll be using. This is good for me, because reading all the text is quite hard on my voice. And, as always, I'll record the game's music with my Roland MT32 for maximum quality. Well, enough talking. Let's get started. Join our friend and semi-hero Roger Wilco as he rockets back toward his home planet Xenon, which he hasn't seen since Space Quest II. Having successfully rescued those two ingrates from Andromeda, he decides a pit stop on Magnetius is in order. During the descent to this cosmic canteen, he is unaware of the interest that has been generated regarding his fate. of his position, Master. Off to Magnetius with you then. It is time for Wilco to meet the fate which I have crafted for him. As our story begins, we find the aluminum mallard parked outside a seedy spaceport bar. We join Roger as he relates one of his greatly exaggerated tales of adventure. The aliens are only too happy to listen, as long as Roger is by. See, there is this deadly root monster, a ferocious swamp creature, and a Labion Terabeast to contend with. Then I had to outsmart another of Bohol's gorillas and steal the shuttle so I could penetrate the asteroid fortress and pull the plug on that corpulent creep once and for all. Yeah. Are you Roger Wilco? Uh, yeah. Please come with me. Hello, Roger Wilco. Surprised to see an old friend? You have no idea how special this moment is for me. This is no chance encounter, I can assure you. I have this one loose end to tie up before I begin my reign as the supreme being of all that exists. I do not like to lose. You are a blemish on what would otherwise be a perfect record of domination, terror, and invincibility. Besides, 
I'm still a bit miffed about that asteroid deal in Space West 2. Anyway, to relieve the pain of my humiliation and to prevent you from being a pain in my future, you must die. It's been nice seeing you one last time. Then, do the dirty deed. You go left and split them up. Mr. Wilco, follow me and do exactly as I say. Let's move! Hey, I want to know what the f Listen, I can't explain it all to you now. They've got a beat on our coordinates. We've got to move fast. We gotta do this fast. Shield your eyes! Jump into the time rip! Do it now! You've got to! If I take the time to explain, we're both parking lot pizza! You'll understand soon. Now where am I, you wonder aloud to non-existent auditory organs? This place sure looks homey. Hey wait, this looks just like Xenon. It is Xenon. It's, it's, it's really a pile. <coughs> Along with the changes induced by an armed conflict, the city looks different, more modern with a heavy dash of post-disaster seasoning. Casually glancing at the status line, you happen to notice that you're in Space Quest 12. What's happened? Who was that guy with the overdeveloped hair dryer? Why did you let yourself be talked into jumping into some strange shimmering hole? Why are you talking to yourself? These incredibly intriguing questions will quickly be forgotten with barely an electron stirred in that well-armored orb atop your shoulders. Okay, there we are. I like how they're uh, using the uh, sequel numbers as reference to time frames and how Roger is apparently able to look at the status bar to tell what time he's in. The fourth wall does not exist in this game. Well, the um, CD-ROM version had a couple of disadvantages compared to the um, original floppy version. Um, the primary problem with it at least for my purposes, is that it does not have the ability to have both text and speech at the same time. I like to include subtitles whenever possible because, well, not everybody is uh, equally great at English and I might talk over some stuff or whatever. So, in case you can't hear something, it's nice if you can also read it. Unfortunately, that wouldn't have been possible. But, I was able to find a fan-made patch for Space Quest 4 CD that actually fixed this problem, as, uh, along with a couple of others. So I can actually enable both text and speech. Unfortunately, I, w I couldn't do that before the introduction, but from now on we'll have both text and speech. Also gonna up the speed a little bit. Another thing that uh, this version fixes is some of the graphics in the CD-ROM version were inexplicably worse than the floppy version. For instance, the background of this screen looked much more um, pixelated, uh, with much more palette troubles than the, the floppy version. So this patched version actually uh, puts some of the floppy edition graphics back into the CD version. So we should be getting the best of both worlds. Uh, also back 
are the smell and taste icons from Space Quest 1 VGA, which is great, of course. Um, again, they serve no purpose, but they do give you a lot of uh, humorous messages all across the board. And you might be wondering why I'm keeping my mouse over here um, while uh, I'm telling you all this rather than letting the game run, because unfortunately in this particular portion of the game there are a couple of things walking around these streets that can kill you. And I don't want to run into them by accident while I'm explaining stuff. Anyway, since we've uh, basically run out of time with uh, just the introduction and this little bit of explanation, we'll get started on the game proper in the next video.